Hello, hello. Welcome. Let me quickly adjust the settings. Okay. Um, today, maybe the last episode, or maybe the second to last. That depends on how far we are getting this today. Um, let me quickly set up the last stuff like the chat for YouTube. Set up the last. Oh. Okay. And as you can see today, there's no 60 clone board in front of me, but this little piece. And this is the RF modulator replacement. This will replace um, this fat and ugly metal box containing a lot of parts which are no longer yeah kind of required today because you can see this is the old antenna plug socket whatever and this is a bit of out of date today so normally you use hdmi or display port or whatever, but no longer this old coax cable antenna stuff. So I have to build a replacement for the modulator. And I've built one before for my other 60 clone project. So this is doing the same again. But I built this Lego Technic frame to hold this board hopefully in place while soldering because it sucks if um, stuff is not held properly in place. So I have um, printed out the part list again and I hope I have all the parts available because I ordered them two times um, for the last bit. So let's have a look at the back which is labeled with RF. what we can find here and we can find a lot so maybe we just start with first back um, resistor R2 which is kind of 3.3 kilo ohm and we need only one of it So let me also measure again the distance between the pins. It's like one centimeter to find. Yeah, I guess I have to use this time the outer one. Let's see if this will work out. And you probably may know, resistors don't have a polarity, but I like to have them kind of orientated and I used the color coding. And since this is a 3.3, .3, it started with orange, so it goes in there and it perfectly fits. Let me grab a bit of blue tech to hold it in place. And you know what? I can't solder it without putting it out and in the frame. But that's okay, it's flexible. So I can hope you can now see what I can see. Let me check this. It's not so easy with all this cable. Yeah, should work. So, 
last time I learned keep solder on your soldering iron when you are finished and remove it when you start a new session. I did this. Okay, first one's in there. Which was R2, I hope. Yes. Okay, maybe I can put in some more at one time. Um, so let's have a look at the next component. Uh, let's search for the resistors. Which are, of course, are at the bottom of my pile. Oh, come on. I should have sorted it a bit out at the beginning. We have R7, 5. Okay. I guess that should work out. Did I put on the the audio? Yes. Okay, next one would be R1 and R62. Those are one kilo ohm. them. And both are bended in shape. And this is, what did I say, one kilo ohm, so it starts with a brown ring and it goes into R1 and R62. Okay, maybe let's search for number R11, okay, this one. Welcome Ole, moin moin. And we need three of those. So I have five of those small PCBs because that was the smallest amount uh, you could order them or let them produced in China or in the Asian region. So I would have boards for more of them, but I don't have parts for more RF modulator. So let's see, this is for R8 and this is 150 ohms, so it starts with brown again. R8. R11 and R12, which is over here. Okay, so then we have R5, R7, R4. I'm looking for this one, 61. Whoa. Well, 
This is 470 ohms. So it starts with a yellow ring and it goes in here. So now I have this line complete and I can just put in a big piece of blue tech to hold them all in place at once. Turn it around. Or maybe they will fall off. So let's just fix that as well. So I need a bit more blue tech. But that's just for a short moment of time. Okay, now we can turn it around and solder it. Not so easy to reach all of them. So I have to find a way around the legs. And of course I don't want to well, heat up my my Lego, which will just melt away immediately. Come on. Uh, not easy to get there. And maybe from here. Yes. Oh, I should have all soldered in and I guess I will um, remove the legs immediately. Because they are just in, in the way. Wow, what an ugly solder. I produced over here. Oh, that's crap. Flying around today. Okay. Not so very nice. Solder joints over here, but
I guess that's okay. Okay, some resistors left, R4, but first let me cross the old one from the list, R61 to the ground, 8, 11, 12, 162. So this is a 68 ohm. It should start with blue. Yes. R4. Let me quickly check the magnifying glasses. And this one is R7. It's uh, 75 ohms. So it will start with purple. And it goes in here. And now I need R5. So only one is required. And this is a 220, so it will start with red, red. And it goes in here. Okay, let me quickly fix this. So today is Sunday and tomorrow is Monday and that means I think a lot of people have to go to work again and me also. I would like to have another week of vacation but yeah it is like it is. Oh, come on. What's wrong with the... This PCP is not so... willingly to be soldered on. I don't know if it's the material or whatever, or the smaller solder pads, but... It looks kind of ugly. Let me move this stuff away. I guess I'm using a bit of a bit too much solder. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, I'm getting hot. Okay, but from the top side, everything looks fine. Now I have this R3 left. Which is a, uh, what is it? 5.6 kilo ohms. So it starts with green. It goes in here. And the last component in this column is the L2, which is a choke coil, I guess, in English. Where is it? Of course. Second to last package. And this is my last one. I guess they were expensive. So, L2, and I guess it's kind of this orientation. If you need an RF modulator replacement and you like to use this one as well, just search Google for C64 RF modulator replacement and you should end up one of the first hits um, of a GitHub page from the guy who designed this PCB. There you can download uh, all the files you need to to get this board produced. For example, at PCB way or wherever you like. Okay, now we are done with the resistor and this choke thingy. So I guess we will move on by crossing them off the list. Uh, and now I want to go to the, I think the capacitors, let's see, C1. 330 picofarad, 100 volts, very small part, and this one goes to C1, which is over here, and let's search for C6 as well, to have it in one one row and I think I saw a C6 at the bottom of my pile. Here it is. Uh, C6 is a 68 picofarad. And you have a code on the, well you can't see it in the cam, there's a number printed on it. It says 680. This is like uh, 
six eight and zero ten to the power of zero multiplied so it just stays six eight if it for example would be six eight one i think it would be six hundred and uh, six hundred eighty picofarad and so on So you might be able sometimes to identify the value of a capacitor by looking at the number code if there's some printed on it. Okay. I'm quite happy with my Lego frame. It's working very well. Okay, let's cross them off the list. C1 and C6. So let's search for C5 and C7. Uh, C5 and C7. So C5 is a 0 0.33 microfarad. And this one goes in slot number C5, which is over there. So, and C7 is a 0.1 microfarad, very small one. And this is what going to C7. There. To take care of the blue tech and the Lego. I know it. Okay, I guess that one was connected to ground. Okay, that's fine. So let's move on maybe to the Q1 
and Q2. Or let's do the electrolytic caps. And I have only two left. Wow. Um, C3 and C8. And again, those have a polarity. You have this marking for the minus side on the cap. And it should go in there like this. So minus is pointing to minus and plus to plus. And this is the plus side is marked with a little plus on the board. Okay, like this. This one. That one. And over there. Oh no, I already have two. Oh, Lego frame melt. This is very sensitive to heat, the plastic. Well, so C3 and C8. Now we have all the capacitors done. And we can move on to the next part. Not this one, not this one. And this is empty, but I want to keep this for the part number. We don't need all. those do we need later. So here we have a diode. The 1N4148. Come on, back in back, and I guess I ordered 10 of them because they are not so expensive. So let's see. And D2 is over there. And we have to take care of the polarity. So there's a circle around this hole. So I guess it needs to go in there like this. But I can quickly verify this. Ah, come on, on my old board where I have this already built and haha, I would have installed it on the wrong side. So this goes in there and then it's bent over. Interesting. 
So, how did I bend this over the last time? I can't remember. I think I just bended it around something like the solder wire, for example. So we have a nice bend and then just put it in there and solder it. But I need something to hold it in place. Uh, otherwise it will just... I want to have it a bit floating. Above everything. So like this. Okay, now I can cut off this old. Oh, that one flew away. So the missing parts for the 60 clone board, the cartridge connector, obviously did not arrive yet because it's Sunday today. But as I said before, it's not really necessary for the device to, to operate. But I would not be able to plug in, for example, the diagnostic cartridge. Okay, but first let's finish this one here. Um, this was the diode D2. Now we have two transistors. I need to find in here Q1, Q2. And I have only two left. So maybe I have to reorder some the next time. Or I just swap RF modulators around. So let's see, Q1, Q2, really easy, but I have to bend the inner leg a bit so I can get this one in there like so and for the second one as well So, a bit of blue text, blue text, blue tech. Okay. Hmm. Let's see how to reach those over there. Oh. 
Okay. Not very nice solder soldering today, but I guess it's a matter of this PCP. Okay, both transistors are in. Now we have only a few things left. Um, the U1 is a 5 volt voltage regulator. And this one has a, also another um, form like the other ones we used the days before. This one just looks like a transistor. And it goes in over here. Maybe I can solder it without a blue tick. Let's see. Okay, now let me cut off those legs. Let me quickly... No, it's okay. I'll leave it that way. Okay. Looks nearly finished, all right. Only a few things left. Um, I already put away those, so I can put all of those away. Uh, here we have this jumper block, quite nice Oop. for configuration because um, you have to set jumpers differently depending on the board you want to use it on. And you have to take make it proper because otherwise it could burn away maybe your VIC chip. So this is a um, tr trimmer, 220 ohms, and it has 25 rotations, revolutions, or what it's called in English. So you can you can screw this little screw on the top to yeah set up the ohm value you want to have. And let's check on the old board. It goes in there like this. And we have RV1. This is the same thingy but for one kilo ohm in total. So if you screw it all to the left I think you have zero ohms and to the right one kilo ohm. And this is for fine-tuning 
the chroma and the color signal or output. And we can see that later on the oscilloscope. So first we have to get them in. And hold them somehow in place. Like so. You could also leave those parts away and like um, set a bypass solder joint, but um, I like to build the full board with all its features. Okay, they are in. Next one would be this jumper block. And I just have to find a way to, wow, still hot, to hold it in place, like so. And quickly solder a few pins in place and then let me just remove the blue tag because otherwise it's getting really hot but it's already um, yeah already soldered to the board and now we just have to Fill in the remaining ones. So I guess I have then to look up the configuration for the jumpers. But there's still some other stuff to do. Okay, completed. Now to the connectors. And I will put them out. Put them on like this. Because the board will be... Oh, I can't put it in the frame. It's a bit wobbly. Let's see. Not to smelt the Lego again.
Okay. That should hold. Yes, and the last one, the last part for this small for this small excursion to the RF modulator. So oh, this is not properly aligned. Okay. Ah, smoke in the face. Okay, so let's check this out. Uh, but I have to cut a few more legs over here, I see. Okay, I guess we don't need this Lego frame anymore today. So our RF modulator is finished. Small little piece of stuff. So let's grab again the 60 clone board. After cleaning up a bit, here is the back of jumpers. We have to configure it. And just for order, let's just move this all, strike this all away. Okay, let me just Clean up a bit the space over here and let me grab our main project. Okay. Don't. So now this little board <coughs> should fit here. And done. RF modulator installed. So now we can also, where did I put it here? Install the fuse. Little fragile part. So it's just in 1.5 amp fuse and that one should fit in here perfectly and it does. So fuse installed, one spare fuse. And now we could either start populating the ICs, but I checked the old board and we need to desolder, I think, two ICs. All the other ones are socketed, which is very nice. And yes, I would say, uh, let me check how I can put the board to the side. Maybe on the notebook here. Yes. So let's grab the old board 
And let's try to get some of the ICs out there, which is not really a fun job because it always makes a lot of cracking and whatever noises. And I have to do this very careful. Just lift it up a little, little, little bit. Try to get under here on this side. I have to turn the board a bit because otherwise I can't really work very well. There we go. First I see, this is a CIA chip. And I will just put it on this side. This one is getting out much more easier. Uh, I have to check the, the legs. Some of them are a bit, a, a bit bent. Then we need the, let me check what it is, the basic, the kernel and the charom. So two of them are already socketed. This one. Oh, this one is. This one is stuck a bit. So let's try from this side. Okay. We have to desolder that one. Wow, what are for ugly sockets those are. And we have to desolder U6, the color run. But we also need the CPU, which is over here. Hmm. I have no space to einen Hebel zu haben in German. So, I guess now I can, yes, I can move below the CPU and remove it. Then we have the SID chip, the sound chip, the famous sound chip. This one is really loose. And this is the PLA, one of the most common ICs to break the old Commodores. And for the VIC chip, I will power on the desoldering station. I have to get this metal thingy um, off the board. One reason I want to use it on the other one, because uh, it will act as a heatsink for the VIC chip. And the VIC chip definitely needs kind of a heatsink, those old ones. So let's try to get this off. And we have to desolder ICs. And this is this one. This one right in here. So I need flux.
and I put fresh solder to it. So that's my way of desoldering stuff. It's kind of an experience I gathered in the last project. And it's working very well for me. It does not mean that this is the right method for you. But for me, this is fine. So, and we also want to get this one out here. Um, it has this metal clamps like oh, bent. So I will bend them back. So they align with the board. And we have to desolder, I think, this. How many? Oh, there's one. One missing. This will be a tough job because it's connected to ground. So I guess we have to desolder four of those. But let's start with the I see, and sorry for the noise. It does not work. To be careful to not break the solder pads, but you need a bit to to wobble it around to get it kind of loose. Okay, very short pins, but let's see if this will work. And now let's try those ones. And I guess the tip I have on this desoldering thingy is too, <laughs> it's too small. So I guess I have to change the tip to get it to get it out. I was able to suck away the solder, but this is still connected somehow. Oh, I guess this one was from the RF modulator. I don't need it to have this. Ah. 
So let's see. Let's see what's first the status of the pins. Now I like to just press the pins a bit so I know they are now loose. And I guess they are, except of that one. But here, I guess it's kind of impossible to to have this removed. So, but first let's try to remove the the IC. Because here, no, there's no chance. But let's see if we can get to this one here. <laughs> it's stuck, but it's cracking. so less space available and I don't want to destroy the the solder uh, the circuits below the chip but I, I love this tool so it's out that was not so bad but now we forgot this one The U6, I have to do U6, which is this one over there. Get some fresh. Why I am adding solder? That there is enough solder for the desoldering gun to suck out. Because right now it's just a little tiny bit of solder and that's mostly too, too less for the gun to properly work. So I will just add a bunch, like so. And now we can make a noise again.
and after a while you can hear if it sucked good or not. For example, this one is not this one is not good. It's connected to to ground. So I will add more solder and try it again. This time it should be sufficient. Okay, let's see if we can remove the IC. It's a bit hard to get to it. First I want to, oh I forgot to check the pins, if they are loose now. Because if they aren't, it makes no sense to try to lift the ship out. Unfortunately, there's this capacitor in the way, and I just can't get this one out there. Ah, gosh. This will break the... This will break the IC. So I need to find... will bend the leg. Damn it. No, it's it's somehow stuck. But where? looks good. Ah, I'm not so happy with this. with this one because I can't get a proper now now it has lost its battle against Ugh. Looks terrible, especially this pin. Well, we have to see if we can get this in the old board and the new board. Yeah, but how? How to get the VIC chip out there? Uh, 
I don't like this tool at all. Because every time I try to use it, I ended up with bent pin. But I guess this time I was more lucky. Okay. So I guess this is all the stuff from the old board. Let's bring back the new one. So I have no idea about this precision sockets. So I have this device to to bend the pins in shape, but Okay, but how do the sockets work at all? Are they just do you have to use it by force or whatever? Oh, hmm. This is not good. I'm not a fan of pushing so hard, but I guess that's the idea how those sockets work. And now the IC is in there perfectly. Okay, great. Let's try to bring the next one in shape. Oh, this one has has bent. Has bent pins. They won't go into the socket, I guess. So let me just Oh, this looks terrible. Oh, I guess I have to check each and one of those and rebend them. But this was not a fault from oh from us um, removing it from the old board. I guess they were stuck in the old socket this way. But for the new socket they need to be perfectly in shape. So I really have to bend each of it manually. We have them aligned horizontally and vertically. So I guess this side is now okay. Mm. Mm. I'm not not happy with this. I see.
some of the pins are really, really bad. And I guess someone before, or the owner before, pushed it in the socket with a lot of force. Okay. Let's put it in here one more time. Ah, and now let's see. Hmm, I like those sockets. It's perfectly in there. Oh, great. Okay, next one. This is the, maybe the basic ROM, I guess. Uh, let's check the pins. Okay. This could work out. Let's try. Oh, they need a bit more distance. It still, still needs more distance. I guess this device should fix that as well. But I guess it didn't. So we do it just by hand. Okay, now we are in there, and I guess now we could push it in. Yes, sitting there perfectly. Next one is the whatever, the kernel. I guess an old version of the kernel. There are three officially versions of the kernel. You can find it out with a poke command. Okay, it's in there. Next one is the one we desoldered. That looks good. Yes. Uh, but it is so. It has so short legs, I can't push it in any deeper. No. That's all. I can get it in there. So let's hope there's enough contact. Oh, yeah, this is really bad. Should 
get in there a bit deeper, but I guess it's not possible. And I don't want to put too much pressure on it. So yeah, let's see. Maybe if it's maybe it's working. Next one would be the CPU. But the CPU is looking quite good, except of this one pin. Over here. And this one. And this one. And this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try this. If this is this pin is not good. Okay, this side is okay, and that side as well. So I guess clock clock. It's in there. Perfect. Okay, then we have the PLA. Oh, this one is terrible. There's a big blob of solder. This pin is really bent. Also on this side, very bad shape. Okay. I just want to remove old solder. Especially here. You 
you can't see what I'm doing. It's out of the cam. I'm trying to get this pins cleaned up a bit. So let's try I'm not so happy about the condition of some of those ICs. But I like those sockets, really. So, the SID chip, for example, looks perfect. It's not dirty, nothing. It's just getting in there very easy. So, now we have... Oh. Let's see if we can... I see we desoldered just a few minutes ago. So mm, not very not very aligned those pins. Um, maybe I turn the cam a bit up here while working on the ICs. Uh, I'm really not happy about this one. Okay, that has a marking there, pin 1. Let's see if we can resurrect it somehow. And get it in there. But it doesn't go in there much deeper, so I just hope there's enough contact. So, and the last device would be the Vic chip with this golden and ceramic design. This is one of the very, very first ones and the old ones. This one is getting very, very hot, for example. But I guess It's getting in there without problems. Very nice. So let's turn the cam a bit down again. So are the missing ICs? I... Oh, that's not perfectly in there. Okay, now. Now it's leveled. Uh, all the other ICs I should have lying around somewhere in the back, so let me just grab them. So yeah, and one I see is missing. Uh, maybe I have to desolder that one 
from the old board as well if we want to check the board today. But first, let's see what we have. U29. Let me move that a bit up. Okay. Ah, oh, they are packed in a terrible, terrible way. I can't get it out there. Okay. But they are brand new. So U29 is a dual flip-flop whatever I see. And if you have new fabric, new ICs, they often, the legs are a bit, a bit, um, bend to the outside and I can just bend them in easily with this device. So let's search for U29, which is over here. So check for pin one and just put it in the socket, easy. Yes, next one would be, let me check my list also, U26. Okay, I ordered it two times, so I guess I have one in spare. And U26 is down here. Oh, come on. Sometimes they really Go not very well in there. Okay. But it is in. It's a bit moved to the right side. But whatever. U26. Next one is U8. And we have U8 over here. It's a 741 or whatever. 7406 and it goes in there. Okay. Next one, U30, an SN, SN74LS193. Nice packaging, very individual, I would say. So, U30 is over here, so I guess it's part of the, of the clock and timing circuitry.
Okay, it's in there. Then we go on with U13 and U25. So we should have four of them. That's right. How do I get them out of the packaging? Ah, oh, come on. So, 13, 25. So, U13 is over here. So, I guess they have something to do with the RAM because they are two of those on each side of the RAM chips. So maybe they are the decoder or whatever. Okay, in U31. And that one is over there in the big area. Oh, I have only one of those, so I guess they were a bit more expensive. So let's take care that this one, U31, is not getting broken during installation. Ah, I'm so stupid. I forgot to measure the voltages before putting the ICs in. So this is now very risky, <laughs> turning it on. And this is not good. This is not holding in place. Those stupid ah, chip. But I can't push it further in there. Ah, damn, I wanted to test the voltages before. <clears throat> I guess now it's too late. So I hope I made no mistakes. U15. U15 is over there. U20. Sometimes they use that packaging, sometimes different, but I won't get this one out here without removing their tape stuff. U25, U20. Uh, 
uh, U20 is there. Ouch, ouch. U16, U28. I guess this is also related to the memory. So we use 16, now it's down here. And 28 is just around the corner. Oh, I love new ICs and those sockets are really cool. Works perfectly. Okay, and the last one uh, would be U27. Okay, and this one goes U27 goes in here. So now you might be wondering, hey, what's about all the other sockets without ICs? Yes. Now I grab my spare parts box for RAM and I just take a lot of them from here and put it in there because I bought a lot of them from well, AliExpress and I tested them all so they should work and now I take eight of them and put them in the sockets for RAM. Oh, come on. I guess I have to bend this one a bit. Okay. So this is yeah kind of fabric new memory modules but they were fabric new like <laughs> when were they produced in the fifth week of 88 but they were never never sold on were never used in devices before so they are kind of new. And I like having new components. Hello, Bert. Nice evening to you. Yes, looks kind of nice, but um, 
I hope it's working. <laughs> so, and then I have... Oh, where did I put them? Ah, over here. I have bought also from AliExpress the MC4044. This is the phase frequency detector. And let's see if this one will work. So let's get one out of here. And I didn't test it, those ICs somewhere else. I can just hope they will work. They are hopefully from Motorola and not fake branded. Yeah, and now the only I see missing is that one. It's not, uh, it was not on stock. It should have been arriving in the last days, but it didn't. So I guess, unfortunately, I have to fire up the desoldering gun again to get the existing one out here. Mm. Let's see. Not happy about desoldering that one. And I'm very not happy about forgetting to measure the voltages before. It's a risky... Oh! It's a risky thing I'm now doing. Okay, that one. is here. Let me quickly mark it. There are so many rows of pins and uh, I don't want to get the wrong ones. some flux on the old adding some fresh solder oh, I guess the soldering iron is not ready it is. To be honest, I don't expect the computer to run in the first place. This thing is much more complicated like the short boards. A lot of more components. Mm.
Okay, now let's check if the pins are loose. They are, so it should not be so hard to get that one out there, but you never know. Oh, this is very nice. Perfect. This was perfect desoldering. Very happy. So let's swap that again. And I guess now we can put this one temporarily until the new one arrives in here, but it won't get in there. Maybe the pins are a bit out of alignment. But they aren't. So, why are you doing this? Hello, Midolf. Welcome back. Yes, it's a very old ceramic wick. And to be honest, I'm not so happy about it right now because I read they are very, they are getting very hot very fast, and I don't have this metal bin thing and heat spreader installed yet. So, yeah. Okay, that should work. Yes, picture quality I'm really interested in. Unfortunately, this is so... The, the writing is just off. You can just see MOS left, so I don't see the production date or whatever. And yeah, I guess this is finished right now. Missing is the cartridge connector, but that's not so important to turn it on right now, I guess. And yeah, I'm really not happy I forgot to measure the voltages before, but I'm not going to rip all the ICs out now. Um, that should be the 6569, yes. First time powering up, yes, yes. So let me quickly check what I need. I need my audio and video cable, of course, that goes in there. And I need power, that's over there, and I need my HDMI cable into the upscaler. Ugh. Getting a bit messy on the desk. So yeah, there should be uh, let me let me think where is the USB video thingy? Uh, deactivate USB video activate just a second I have no picture of this thingy. maybe I have to turn it on to get a picture oh. 
there was a time when I was looking for one of the old wigs too for my for my oldest bread bin. Yeah. I I can't read it because it's the label is unreadable. It's scrubbed away. I can't read it. I'm sorry. Okay, I guess I put everything in. And it was just coincidence. I, I got this wick on the on the board. I just bought this board for yeah for desoldering parts for this project uh, from eBay and it just had this sit on there. So very, very nice. So let's turn it on. And where do I find my picture? Let me first check my, my output here. I can't see anything. That's, that's a problem of, of this box, I think. Oh, these adapters. I need to go from this one into an upscaler, from HDMI into USB. And Yes, maybe I'm on the on the wrong scene. No. Where is this video signal gun? It's not visible. Let me ah. Yeah, it's size zero by zero. That's crap. So let me transform. Maybe I have to plug it in again. USB video. Must be. Get no, no picture from that device. So let me figure this out first because. But I'm just removing this head glasses right now and using that USB port instead. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm doing. I'm. I'm trying. Ah, oh, now the. It's making some sound. Activate. Ah. Okay, but this is a bit too big right now. Uh, just a second. We put it on like 800 by 600. It should be something like or oh, by three i guess okay let's try again and we have no signal at all that's bad <laughs> okay so i guess we need some debugging to do right so trying to figure out the voltages and so on, because right now I can't see anything spectacular wrong. There's a blue screen on the other board. <laughs> I know that for sure because I'm playing with that one. So let me, but the VIC chip is getting warm. Also, the, the SID chip. So, I guess that's not so bad. Okay, let me try something with my multimeter. So now I have this blue screen on the way. Uh, let me check my cheat sheet. 
for example, the Vic chip should have uh, on pin 40, on pin 40. So let's grab ground somewhere and pin 40 is over here. So five volts, this is good. Then we must have... Oh, I know what I forgot. I'm so stupid. <laughs> oh no, I forgot to set the jumpers for the, for the RF modulator. Oh no. And like an hour ago, I, I told you guys, take care of the jumpers, because otherwise it could end badly. <laughs> so let's grab like five of them. Okay. And I have to open the documentation. Just hang on. So, C64RF modulator replacement. You can't see this right now on the screen, uh, on the inter screen. I'm just opening the GitHub page of the project. And there is somewhere um, building, installing, jumper. So, Blah blah blah. With all jumper, the board is configured for long board. All jumper in up position. So I guess we have to put them all in up position. Oh, come on. Why are they not fitting so well? Those are just stupid jumpers. Let me quickly deinstall the board to get the jumpers on there. Yeah. We have to bend it a bit. Oh, come on, jumper. Okay, now. Now I have all jumpers in the up position. Uh, the correct pull up resistor, we glue enable, disable, onboard regulator with all jumpers in the up position. The board is configured for long boards. 250.407. Okay. So let's try again. Ooh. <laughs> Not very good picture, but at least there is some kind of picture. Wow. Okay, but, but um, I. I read about this um, horizontal bars going from up to down. I think it was some something with the ground signal, but ground should already be connected. Also, I didn't tune the the uh, trimmer, but at least we have some kind of very weird picture. <laughs> Houston, we have a problem, yes. So, I don't want to overheat, and I also, I didn't, um, oh yeah. Let me turn this off, and let me turn on my, no, I can do this with the multimeter. At least I can, I can um, not fine-tune it, but at least I can measure it. 
So we switch to frequency. And let me look at my list and we should have on pin 21 and 22 of the VIC. So let's see. This is getting up right now, which is a bit strange. So let's go to the next pin. Oh, this is disturbing the... Wow, <laughs> let me quickly reset. That should not have an if effect if I touch this pin at all, but it does. And it goes down to 5 megahertz, which is maybe a bit wrong for the for the VIC, it should be like 7.88. Okay, so I guess I have to debug the frequency stuff. I only know how to do this on the short boards because there's only one chip, the 8701, and that's easy to measure if it's working or not. But, um, I try. I have. To, I think I have to figure it out how it's working on this board. I know there's somewhere. I think U twenty is the five five six chip, the time one timing chip. This one is, but on, only doing the reset signal. I think for the CPU, and that's working fine because it's powering up, and the. Clock circuitry is definitely around here with the crystal and so on. And yeah, I guess I have to figure it out. Also on the CPU on pin one, let's measure that one. CPU pin one is here. We have 900. 84 kilohertz. That's very good for the system clock. And this is also coming out of pin 2 to the other components on the board. That's right. And on the VIC on pin 17, that's this one, we also have this frequency because the VIC is creating the frequency for for the rest of the board. But the frequency is coming in definitely on this pin and I'm not happy with, with the measurements of that one. So let me let me turn it down before it's getting too hot. Yeah, let me power up my oscilloscope. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let me just edit this to what was the resolution? 640 by 480, I guess. But I can't show you the oscilloscope picture right now because I have then to connect it by USB and so on and so on. But let's let me do this. Let me check this out. Ah, oh, so many connectors and cables and parts and whatever. And I can't see it. Come on, cable, go in there. 
So let's move this one over here, but not onto the soldering iron. And let me connect this here. And then I have to start this stupid software. And da 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 da, just a second. There it is. Ultra scope. Okay, and now I should be able to show you that picture. And I need this probe. What I really hate about this probe is that it is scratching that it is scratching on the board if I clamp it on it, but I have to do it. Okay, let's see. Let's turn this on. And let me hold this there. And let me press auto. Okay. Then let me see how I can measure. Uh, frequency seven point seven three. Okay, that's not so bad. But it should be uh, seventeen dot seven three. Oh, it's a bit too high, I guess. Let me try to to screw a bit around on this on this uh, resistor over there. Mm, it's somewhere like here. I have no idea in which direction. Ah, okay. It seems to have an effect on the picture, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So I guess... Oh, I think it crashed? No. Okay, so I have to find the setting on the oscilloscope to... Ah, it's getting hot. To uh, show me the exact value. And I think I have to do this on the device. So you can't see it um, on the screen. Let me check uh, where what oh, it's... I, I, I got this oscilloscope for Christmas and it's quite new for me and I have to I have to find I have to find the correct settings. So where it was it was able to to show this setting somewhere. Just a second, I need to find this. It's time based, no. It's not trigger related. Damn it. I guess it is. Ah, I know I have it, I think. Let me quickly check this again. 
but not on the screen in the stream, but on my oscilloscope directly. So 17.7 three four seven and we need to have seventeen point seven three four four seven three four four okay this is going up so I'm going down a bit. So that would be the setting which the documentation says 17.7344 for PAL systems. But the picture is getting more worse. No? But I will leave it on the value we should have three, four, four. Yes, that's that's the correct that's the correct value. Okay. So next thing I could do is uh, looking at the chroma and luma signals, but I don't think they are changing the picture right now. No, they are changing the, the colors, I guess. Yeah, but that, that's something different, which is wrong here. Ouch. But I think I have to figure it out uh, off cam because I have to now read into this topic and try to find why the picture is so bad. But I'm very happy that the Commodore is kind of working at all. So I guess the the uh, IC survived and the new DRAM ICs are fine, the logic chips are fine. That one I soldered over, the, the new one will hopefully arrive this week, the upcoming week. This thing is getting hot as expected, this 5 volt um, voltage regulator. The SIP shit is the 6581 without any revision or whatever. It was built in the 35th week of 84. So I guess this is the, the very old um, model of the SID chip. Yes. And also without the cartridge connector, I can't plug in uh, my diagnostic cartridge to uh, check all the other functions. But hey, at the end, I'm, I'm very happy. It's it's working. It was a lot of parts, but it is always a lot of fun soldering that stuff. And I, I'm 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 already already thinking up about what what doing next. And I really like maybe to solder an Amiga 500 plus. Or I recently saw um, someone having an Amiga 2000 board from the same guy who did this board, for example. And um, yeah, then I saw some videos about this modular, uh, modu modular 64, it's called. It's also in 64, but um, it's shaped like a cube. It's some kind of a baseboard 
with connectors and then you slide in different additional cards like the graphics card where the VIC chip is on and the CPU card where the CPU is on and the memory card and so on and then you have a very nice modular built 64 uh, cube that would also be a nice project yeah but right now I have to get this one working and yeah I, I did once or twice I think the gaming stream with the old C64 um, games I have on this ultimate well, let me turn off all those thingies on the on this picture uh, on this cartridge here it's this is such an amazing piece of, of hardware. It's emulating a uh, 1541 floppy drive, but you can plug in a USB stick, just throw on all your D64 files or whatever on the USB stick, and you just can press a button. It will pop up the menu. You select like this, this file, and then it's like it's you put in an original disk in the original disk drive. And also it's had built-in cartridge support for the famous cartridges like Action Replay and whatever. And so this little box here is such an amazing thing and it saves so much time and it's so easy to use. So it's not expensive, uh, it's not cheap, it's uh, I think around 150 euro, but it's worth its money definitely. And it has a ROM expansion built in. So some games which support this, you can say like um, the crunch to, to Rio, the ROM expansion unit, and then the game will reload whatever levels or whatever um, in zero time because it's already in the memory. Yeah, so thank you for watching today. And I guess I may be cut and edit all the video material from the streams to some YouTube videos. And I will come back with this bot if I figured out what was wrong with it. And then maybe we are going to play a bit games on that one. So see you for... Yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time. See you. Bye bye.